All right, everyone. We are back for this second round matchup. VGM Gaming versus Forge Esports. This will determine who moves on to round number three in this first round, uh, first qualifier for Nexus Gaming Series Storm Division, which is basically their attempt to revive the professional hot scene. Uh, Forge Esports won the coin flip. They opted for first pick. Uh, the following maps were banned. VGM banned Sky Temple and Braxis Holdout. Forge Esports banned Dragonshire and Cursed Hollow. And VGM Gaming has taken us to Infernal Shrines for game number one. Snag, after that first series... Ooh, my mouth is a little dry. But after that first series, I mean, that was a really strong match from both teams. So I'm, I'm expecting to see that again in round number two. Considering that VGM Gaming comes into this slot as the number one seed. I'm not sure how NGS... Did the seeding, but I'm going to assume that they had a reason for making them number one because they got a buy in the first round. Yeah, I actually I have no idea how they just did the seeding, but maybe just by rank of like player um, MMR, MMR maybe. or something. Um, yeah, so VGM's coming in fresh, uh, but the only downside is their fingers aren't warm, maybe not warm, maybe they've been playing some brawls or doing some other stuff, but they have a full three games of scouting into 4G sports which could play a big factor on what they like to do, what they've already seen. They've, they're have they bringing them... Or I, who picked the map? Um, like, VGM picked uh, this map. V, uh, yes. So they brought them 4G Sports to Infernal Shrines, a map that 4G Sports just played and just saw the Uther comp on. So yep. are they going to expect it again? And will they have a plan for it? Um, or do they have their own plan? Do they have their own plan? You gotta say it like that, right? Since it has more gravitas, right? When we do that, gravitas. Now banning for Forge Esports. Year. <laughs> it's, been, it's gonna be a long night. Oh, it's already been an hour and a half. We got another match. Let's go! I'm excited for now this. The best though. of three. A best of three. Best of trace for our Spanish viewers, and that's the extent of my Espanol. Now, we're still waiting for the ban from Forge Esports. Uh, do you think? They're going to change up their bands a little bit, considering they're against a new opponent. They were banning mostly I, May and Cassie, I believe, in round one. I don't think they are. <laughs> <laughs> I think these players have all played against each other a lot. They've been scrimming. Um, I think everybody kind of knows who the really good heroes are. So the only, I think the only way that the bands change is if the team one changes up their ban, which might leave up options for you know both teams to have one of the op people so like let's say you don't ban may and you don't ban cassie and you leave both up so that one team gets one of each but i think for the most part i think we're going to see everybody kind of follow the same ban pattern um on the typical brawly fight maps okay all right we do see the may ban we should see the cassie being banned nothing surprising i think so they're far. probably gonna ban the ana unless they want the ana again i think they're they probably either banning have... ana or tacitar yeah they do have first pick on forge side and I hate to say that they like Ana because it seems like every team likes Ana. I don't know if it's fair to yeah. say that one team likes Ana. She is a high priority pick, it seems right now. So Vanus being taken out the board. Let's see what we have on the side of BGM. So I think so. We see we got Cattle, their tank, Vespertine, which I believe is Liam, um, Tiger JK, Heavy, and Maka. Um, it's a pretty so stacked roster that they on like the side. To play. It is. Uther. Yeah, I mean, not the Uther. They watched. They watched some some hoops beforehand. So this is now leaving up the Ana, but they're not gonna have the Uther Divine Shield to go with it. Have Tassadar available. We got Garrosh. I don't think he's worth the first pick. Um, Greymane is think, always available. Yeah, Greymane just the general. So you got like the Decker, the Ana, the Tassadar, other options. I I think they can assume that they're gonna get one of the two healers, but they choose the Ana. Take they take the stronger of the two, I believe. At least for particular yeah. in high level play. Yep. For people that don't miss the cues, it's a, a stronger hero. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Or if, for people that know have teammates that know when to stand still when not doing anything important to get those cues in there. It's very if I'm standing still, then I'm getting hit by other people. Not when not, when nothing's happening. <laughs> like, we're at a camp. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we got the ETC and the Deckard being picked. Very strong from both teams. These rosters, obviously, so far. Nothing really, actually, it's nothing really surprising from any of these picks, I feel. Yeah, I mean, ETC again, they're not really showing anything. They're, they're The early yeah. part of the draft before bands is just to kind of get your foundation. The heroes that can work with anybody 
and allow you to transition and pivot. But as I say that, 4G Sports picks two heroes that now that they've showed their two DPS, you can't really pivot too much. Um, you can change your tank up a little bit against the ETC. It's kind of weird, especially on Infernal Shrines, uh, just because ETC does have that kind of soft counter against other tanks. ETC mostly gets countered by the DPS that he's going against. That if he gets outpoked, people that he can't reach. Um, so, but wow. VGM I'll take a, decided I'll take a little to say, nap there while you were talking for so long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Diablo's been banned out. Kerrigan's been banned out. That seems like a target ban. Ban. Yeah, I think they must have seen something in scrims there uh, that they didn't want to play against again. Also, I have to say though, that's unfortunate because I think Kerrigan would have been super fun to watch. And how dare Forge uh, r remove that delight from us and the viewers? A thing that we didn't even know about yet because we're not in all these different little scrim lobbies, and now no. we don't even get to see it. Now like, we know though because it's to banned. Tease it. yeah, yeah, exactly. It, now we it, know that it's a thing, and it's it hurts. teased. It hurts the feels. All right, we got Maya being picked up with Vala. That is just picking um, up the other melee assassin. Yeah, that's some pretty strong kill pressure on that side of VGM gaming. I have to train myself that's no longer no you tank. <laughs> As the VGM difference is gaming. like, yeah, the Vala though is like, it's so squishy. I mean, like they wanted the, a little bit more of the AOE heal, the damage with the multi-shot and the um, the mobility with the vault against the Tassadar. But like if Vala gets hit by a Tassadar Q, that's like half her health. Right. Well, this is interesting. Ooh. Oh, stitches. Stitches. Oh man, I'm excited. I like stitches against my Ev. I dislike stitches on in front of shrines, but uh -huh. it's kind of like a love hate because it's some of those things where you can always hook a bush and you know somebody's gonna be there because that's how Infernal shrines plays. You hook a bush, somebody's gonna be there. Um, when you try to hook in the middle of the fights, obviously you can't. But it's fun against Maev because if Maev does the you know she throws her vengeance or whatever it is pursuit backwards and she's gonna land there's like okay there's my free hook target because your hook is longer than her dash so we'll be see if there's any spicy hooks this game oh man all right i'm um, looking at chat real quick i do love crow says we're home my legs are so sunburnt i'm in so much pain and that, that's hilarious to me i i uh, i giggle at your pain but, uh, if you're going to be scrub enough to not know to do like five layers of sunscreen, then I don't yeah. know what to tell you. I mean, like <laughs> there's no there's no shade at the beach. Apparently, Crow had never been to the beach before and was unaware that the ocean was salty. Now, he I was feel unexpected of how I, salty it was. I, OK, Come on, fine, give him some I feel that uh, high school has failed him in that regard. Regardless, this we're is not, like the biomedical him. engineer science person who now does graphics, I think he knows that the ocean is salty. <laughs> <laughs> it's salty. All right, let's see if I can find... There we go. Found Foul, the, the, the best cameraman in all the business. We got, on the side of VGM Gaming, the blue, Tiger JK on the Maya, Vespertine on the re on the Rel, TS Cattle on the ETC, Ma Maka on the Vala, and who am I missing? Heavy on the Deckard. And Forge Esports now going against the number one seed. Coming off the win, E. Kevin on the Tassadar, Tenny on the Stitches, Winterheart on that. What do you pick? Craymane. Craymane, Ezreal <laughs> on the Blaze, and Balamar on the Ana. I was oh, right. clicking on Balamar, and I was like, wait, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> we got this. There's an early gank attempt on uh, the Stitches and, their, and, their, and company. No one is going to go down, though. Oh, wait, that hook, though, on TS Cattle. Still gonna walk away. Uh, they made us. They made us think they might happen, but nothing happened. We do have Globy quests. Threat. We have lots of Globies, Globy quests going on here, right? We got Stitches and Blaze both want Globies. Um, oh, I guess actually ETC does not. Is that what, he wants Globies with that. Am I wrong? No, that's not. That's the that's actually the auto attack hero. one. Man, yeah. I don't really see many ETCs take that one. Like almost yeah. never. That's why I, I just assumed it was the Globe one when I saw that because I was like, wait a minute. All so right, that's well, a talent that's telling me that Cattle is going to want to just stick onto Stitches or stick onto the Blaze a lot more because he's going to mm -hmm. be the auto attacking with the Maev. So he's expecting to stay in the fights and just and like AA to his fight's content, yeah. right? Well, but we got 
Oh, Tenny and the sleep dart. That is, he's been uh pretty on fire so far with his hooks. Going for I mean, no one's stacking. dying. Hungry for more. Big, big <laughs> health pool stitches. Just gonna be a big boy. He didn't. He didn't go the Cloesto at one though. He's uh he took Globies. He did. Yeah, that's what other quests are you talking about? Hungry for more. Stacking. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking stacking the E because of the. Uh, I mean, yeah, he, that is also a quest that stacks. Ooh, However, that was a great combo by VGM Gaming onto who's on? Oh, E Kevin. That's right. He was on Taster. Uh, Tiger, yeeting himself in there on the Maev. And That was one very dead Taster. I do believe Taster has a very. Well, actually, how squishy is Taster? I don't remember now. No, he's pretty tanky. He's like, he's probably one of the highest health mages, I think. Especially when he gets a shield at four. Oh, that, ah, uh, man. Remember when Tassel like just Look at Winterheart down here. Winterheart yeah, just watching. watching Tiger take this camp. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. And he's gonna go in. He's like, whatever, I got Anna here. We're fine. Yeah. His and healer was there before their healer was, so he's gonna trade out the health. Free camp. Yep. Oh, but! Pull on to Tenny. And the Stitches just waddles his way out of there. Uh, level 4 talents already online. That debilitating dart is being picked by ev every time today. Fro first Frosty win I know took it, and now Valimar is taking it out two games in a row. Is that a, is that a really good talent for Anna, level 4? That, is that the big brain, I'm really actually good at this hero, I can land everything talent? I mean, you gotta be able to hit, hit it. I mean, it's just another one to kill um, the high level. If you niche talents, that if you can hit it, then it works. But meanwhile, two for nothing. two kills. Yep. Yeah, two for nothing special. It happened so fast. I was just like kind of enjoying watching it just go down uh, by the side of four. And they've already G got sports. this wall down too. Yeah, they're On this, yeah. they're going hardcore. This is the frozen Punisher? What is this? Yeah, yes, frozen, it looks right? frozen. Yeah, so, got the little ice the cold Punisher. lore, right? We got so much information on this. UIs. If they get this, which it looks like they are, because Maya is top. That's a. I mean, this is a fort down. Then but they, they might be they looking to trade. Yeah, they're gonna trade and get for, top fort, knowing they can't get the objective. But Blaze should be able to stop that. I mean, they'll probably might be able to get a tower. Uh -oh. um, uh -oh. I think Blaze will save the other tower. Oh my goodness! Look how tanky this big boy is. I mean, Tanya's still gonna go down, but that took them forever to kill that stitches. Now, how greedy can they can 4G Sports be with this Punisher? E Kevin's gonna have to get out of there. Make sure they saves himself away from the URL. Um, there's no way gonna... they save this far. Yeah. Right. Okay. It was close. I mean, I felt like it was a pretty good deal. Close. I think any time you can get a fort off of a first Punisher is a big win. It sets yourself up for so much more map control with now requiring somebody to be in those lanes with the catapults. Um, most of the time, the first Punisher only gets the wall, uh, which kind of does really nothing. So, uh, reading Tempest in chat, if you can land debilitating dart, it usually gets more value than the other four talents, even just as a follow-up to sleep dart. For a 50% slow, short can cooldown. guarantee kills. That's a good point. And I know, like, ooh, that was a great pull by Tiger JK onto Valamar, and that's one dead Anna. And it looks like Tenny on good. the stitches is not all is also not going to make it out of there alive. And oh my goodness, Kevin Dude, the goes combo down. Of cattle oh and yeah. Vesper. Has been so oh, good. Oh my goodness, the the VGM is just leaping onto Forge and just annihilating them right now. Yeah, I mean ETC and Maev has always been a known good combo because ETC if Maev Umbral binds somebody, ETC can knock him back to force the bind to pull. Um, you have a stun for setting up Umbral bind for Maev, but actually the bigger interesting part there in those little scuffles was the Urel knocked back two people into VGM's team, and Maya was just right there with the Umbral Bind immediately. Like, it was so, like so clean. Combo. Oh, there's a mush? He but might die. Okay, yeah, good deal. He's, he's fine. But uh, Tiger's not going to make it out of there. They're going down. But with the alt... Oh, what's it? Oh, anyway. Ez goes down on the Blaze. E. Kevin goes down on the Tassadar Maka with the Vala Snipe. Just hammering away at that task star until they went down oh why can't prison warden's cage there it is yeah i mean oh. they took out they got two ults out of it three ults actually almost everybody's all besides Urel. um and only lost i guess they lost two people not the 
best, but not the worst, honestly, getting those two ults. They are going to have now all of their ults available, which are a much shorter cooldown. They can honestly take a fight here with their ultimates and look for the bio. win. Or look for a fight. Yeah. Cattle going to get ran down by the stitches because of bile. And is that Eye of Horus? That is Eye of Horus. I mean, I guess there's no... Oh, too bad Eye of Horus didn't get the kill, though. I mean, it's always it's... better when Eye of Horus gets the kill. Mm -hmm. Feels good. We have a siege going on top, one person down for this on the side of VGM, and Forge is looking to try to take advantage of that. But Vespertine on this rel is just doing Dude, so much damage, heck? right? Winter is gonna go down. What? Vespertine is just a nine out of any. Oh, he got slept. Valimar sleep darts them to save themselves, and Vespertine is having a party. Yeah, that like level seven Holy Avenger, the resets, yeah. Matt, just so sticky. It's like a sticky wiggy. Yeah. So they're going to get that top wiki, fort. Honestly. I know, right? They're going to get that top fort before the shrine is active, evening up the fort count. I mean, VGM Gaming has looked really good in the team fights that they dictate, for sure. Yeah, their combos of abilities uh, and their synergy between each other is just on point. Um, this is now going to have them with a talent lead on this Punisher, so I don't think we're going to see 4G Sports probably contesting. Unless they get a pick in some form before fighting on the shrine. But it looks like they are just opting to leave it be, get value elsewhere, or try to catch up on Soak. They don't expect to lose a keep here, I don't think. So they're probably not too worried. Right. Oh, man. I, I, I just it's actually just, looking I just really enjoy I just really enjoy having Fal here on the camera. It's so much easier on me. He's so much better at it than I am. So while we're waiting for VGM <laughs> to take on that point... Oh, we got an invade. invade here. We got an invade. Lornado's out, and Winter's kind of all by himself on the gray main. But there's the stun attempt by Ez on the blaze, and they're going to walk away from that. They do get the camp steal on the side of Forge, but the Arcane Punisher goes to VGM Gaming. That's, That's a nice little trade. Not a bad trade, considering they weren't going to get that. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, like, they gonna get you, I wouldn't have expected to yeah, get that type of benefit, but E. Kevin out here, he might be in trouble. Looks like he is. There's Getting the nano. Oh, uh, the... and then Vespertine knocks him out of the. Uh... Oh, whoa! <laughs> this the helping hand saves Eve Kevin. Mm. That literally only worked because he got knocked back by cattle. Yeah. Otherwise, no. he would have hooked cattle. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> insane. Oh, but the root on three members. Oh, he got he got in bunkers sometimes. And there goes Bio. They're looking for an engage. Forward Esports looking to try to push up into this on even talent Vesper tiers. But Vespertine, yeah, it's on the back line again. Warden's Cage goes down, but that is a dead Tassadar. That's a dead Ana. And Vespertine is just going to keep running at them. No fear. VGM Gaming. There he goes in again. Oh, man. I don't think they're going to come out of this. Yeah. Cattle goes down on the ETC, but Tenny goes down on the Stitches. And Ez and Winter are running for their little lives. And that's going to be this a keep. It's going to be an early keep. Yeah, yeah like very early keep. keep. Yeah, VGM Gaming looks really good so far in this match. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I mean like, the, I was gonna say, the like, URL is just being such a pain in the butt. Like, <laughs> just the constant resets on the jump. And it played really well because, like, she'll, he'll jump in and... Uh, use the um, what's it called the hand of freedom to run speed to run speed behind somebody to get the trait knocked back into his own team and then just start channeling up the jump again to get a reset mm. um, just playing the URL the really really well I was going to ask you what do you think um, not VGM Forge has to do in order to adjust to maybe have, get back into this matchup because like, they're not like that terribly far behind like they are behind because they lost the no. keep and everything but they still are not like they're only one lane's pushed in. Yeah, so I mean, like, what, if what they, they get a big do? team wipe, they can push into bottom keep, but Winter's actually in trouble here. Has to run back to his team. Every, everyone, I feel like, is in trouble right now. <laughs> what is going uh, on? Tiger super around. low. There's Eye of Horus way back there. Tiger goes down on the... Oh, on the Maiev. The Rel's on the back, trying to kill Winter on the Greyman, and they are successful. That dance party keeps Ez in check for quite some time. Does not go down, though. And it's still a two-for-one special so far on the side of VGM Gaming. And it looks like Kevin's going to go down. That's going to be a three-for-one. Yeah, I mean, the big camp. things I'm noticing in this game 
uh, with this, um, what is that ability from Eye of Horus, is that after Eye of Horus, he is nowhere near the team. So he, like, during that whole fight after, I think, Maev died, it took Val, like, another 10 seconds to even get close to somebody to be able to heal. Um, that might be hurting him a little bit, that he's trying to get so far back enough to actually be able to use Eye of Horus. That's fair. I'm actually surprised he's not, he didn't take Nana Boost just to Nana Boost the Stitches. Like, Nana Boost Stitches is actually pretty scary. With the amount uh, of slows that he gets and yep. the hook resets. We do have a pause. It might have... I wonder if it was because more of a... Knowing that VGM wants to jump in and group up a little bit. Because they have been. So maybe you get that extra yeah. value from that. Heal up a lot of your yeah, team. Yeah, but then and... wouldn't you think being... One, putting you in Eye Force is risky. Because now you're sitting still in a certain spot. So to not be risky then you have to be really far away. But then after Eye of Horus, you can't help your team. Right. I don't know. It's a, that's a toss-up. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff oh, out I don't know either. Ideas, I'm, yeah. but... I wonder also, the level 20 value is pretty strong, I think, because I think it increases the healing based on how many enemies and heroes you right. hit. Right, and that might be really good. Once you start hitting so many, like you're hitting ETC and Maev and Yorel at the same time, plus you're healing one of your members, those are probably going to be some big heals. Mm -hmm. But they got to make it to level 20 first. That is the challenge. All right, here we go. We are back in. They are looking for this bottom four. They're not. They don't. They don't we don't want to go through oh. the towers. Oh, that jump! Wow. Pretty good. Wow. That was a really good uh, dodge. Le dodge. Yeah. Vespertine is just like here. showing off right I now. Think, I think. Actually, one of the big things here is actually looking at this damage. It is. <sighs> I mean, Vala is just shadowing, not shadowing, is shattering. way much double on everybody else, shattering everybody else on those yep. damage numbers. Oh, there was a strong engage, though, with the Lornado pushing people out. Tiger, though, goes down on the Mayav. They were able to counter-engage and not get killed quickly, thanks to Bunker. Winter trying to go in there with the Grey Mane, but has to back out low on health. We have a whole lot of kerfuffling going on here. But, I mean, like, here's the thing. Vespertine's able to, like, just get so much done still with Rel and the Maka on the Vala. Like, they're down 4v5, still and yet... Yeah, they're still ahead. They're still getting, like, great damage done on the Forge. They this still is, get like, the Punisher. Wow. And they got a three-person mosh. mosh Pit. Holy and shit. And they eel them into there. Oh, my goodness. There we go. Someone finally died. That was so much patience from Cattle and, to get that another mosh. one. Right. Three for one, ultimately. Now, they fought that 4v5 for so long. That was very impressive by VGM game. Yeah, I mean, they're just not... 4G Sports is not able to get onto Maka on the Vala, and Vesper is just being such a little pain that uh, it's almost like they have to focus just peeling uh, the URL instead of doing uh, being able to be the threatening. Um, but holy cow, this is VGM looking so good. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I can tell now why they were number one seed. Yeah, I'd be curious to know, like, if there's some type of, like, maybe there was some type of in-house tournament that kind of decided it, or was it strictly by MMR? Um... All right, we got Slide on the uh, Stitches on Tenny. They're going to go down. Oh, they actually lived. Oh, my goodness. Now they're going to go down. There it is. Maka strafing on their way to L Livitude. I don't know. They were just kind of back there. Uh, Vesper team though, like look at it, like they have no health. And there's the uh, ultimate. I mean, I'm just watching this go down. The core is gonna go down. This is gonna be game number one going to VGM Gaming. They looked very strong going into this second round matchup against 4G Sports. Yeah, I don't. There's not really much to say about that. I mean, VGM right. just they had all their combos, the URL knockbacks into the Maya pulls into the ETC slides. With Mosh Pit available there. I mean, there's only, what, one interrupt for Mosh Pit? There's just Anna Sleep, right? I mean, unless Stitch's hooks, like, is available at that time, but it's a long cooldown. Um, yeah, they kind of just were able to do whatever they wanted. Yeah, that was very impressive. Kills 21 to 7. I mean, I, I'm surprised, like, uh, I feel like Tiger on Maya was, like, the bait. Like they, they died the most, but then like after they died, the rest of the team 
just kept killing and everyone else in the forge. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's like they I mean, as long as Vala doesn't die, they have right. I mean, BGM has all their threat as long as Vala's alive. They still have the protection from Urel, the protection from ETC, and Vala is just like twelve kills on Vala. Vala is twice the damage of both the other other DPS, or he's more damage than the, both of the other DPS on the other team. So like that's the thing with Vala. She's high risk, high reward. She's like got no health. She hits a Q from Tassadar and she's almost dead. But if she doesn't die, she is super high threat. Right. And I was going to say, too, I think they, they feel like they were baiting all the uh, cooldowns on the Maev, and then they had free reign for their other four, right? Yep, yep. All right, we are going to take a quick little break as we wait for game number two to start between VGM Gaming and 4G Sports in this round two first qualifier for NGS Storm Division. Alrighty, we are back. Let's see, we're ready. We're gonna go into this game number two. Three, two, one. And the Towers <laughs> of Doom. Yeah. Um, this is also picked by um, BGM. Uh, 4G Sports opted for the first pick. Okay. Yeah, but I was kind of. I did. I forgot to look at that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, I forget, well, actually, what maps were banned? Bans were Braxis, uh, Sky Temple, Sky... Braxis, Dragon, and Cursed. Okay. Cursed and Dragon, D Shire, banned by 4G Sports. Yep. So 4G Sports likes the first pick. I mean, to see, um, they like that Ana. Trying to still go with it. Yeah, that's a good assumption, I think. Abathur being banned out on Towers of Doom. I always, I, I feel like most. Like high level pro teams know how to deal with ABBA on towers. I feel like ABBA is actually like kind of a super bait bad pick on towers because the lanes are so easy to 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 rotate between and you have so much focus on that bot lane anyways. Like you just four man push and then have somebody double soak. I don't know. 
It's interesting to see ABBA banned as a threat. Um, but this will they, open up some they, other option out of those four top four people that we usually see. <laughs> we're going to see some new heroes. Anna now being we're definitely going to see some new heroes. Yeah, here we go. You think they first picked Deckard? So that Deckard's um, roots and slows and everything in game one seem to be a huge problem as well. I mean, like... Rel. With the combo of the URL yeah. knocking him into Deckard Root, ETC yeah. knocking him into Deckard Root. Yeah. Is there going to be the Tassadar? Is there going to be something new with the Grey Mane just kind of straight up being normal? Or is there going to be a Murky pick? Yeah, first pick Murky, obviously. ETC. Damn. Missed the All chance right. to first pick Murky. I don't even know what we're doing here anymore. Yeah, I quit. I'm out. I'm done. If we're not going to pick Murky. What's the point of living? First pick. So, are we going to get the Kerrigan? This is a map that Kerrigan can still work on. They don't have the ETC with it, so the T's with the Kerrigan might not be as good. Um, so, but they are going to get oh, the Oh, that's right. May didn't get banned out. This is going to be our yeah, first time. This is actually going to be the first time. Yeah. Now, I do believe Avalanche is banned right now. Oh, okay. Never mind. This is... This is boring now. Why even pick May? Avalanche is so fun with I people know. getting knocked out like the other right. half of the map. I haven't, I didn't check if they updated it at all today, but I know last time I checked, Avalanche was banned by NGX for this turn. Yeah, we don't see the chat. Hopefully the teams are talking to each other to verify. Going for I mean, some of that global with the Tahaka. It's not on us. It's not on us. <laughs> Gray main, Dahaka being picked up. Um, Haka. The Haka. That's a that's some globy, global presence that the Haka brings. So I'm looking forward to seeing some digs, some digs and some tongues, yeah. some licky sticky. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully they that's use that to put some pressure onto that early camp bot on VGM. Make sure they don't take it. Um, but showing off that offline early does lead you open to some counters there. The Haka doesn't like. I mean, the Haka is going to do what the Haka does, and he's just going to. No, he's going to be there for the digs. He's going to allow you to get there a little bit faster than the opponent's offlaner. Um, so hopefully, I don't know. Do they? That's they. They could. That... I can see it. We know that strat. Illidan is a pretty good counter into it, but they're banning uh, Decker. Because Whoa, we're going to see some good. new supports. Like at least one, because like Stugoff. Oh, yeah, neither team has picked support yet. Yeah. yeah. Right. Stugoff. I'd see. Does Stugoff go with? Yeah, I think Stukov goes with May really well, actually. The slow from his W and the silence on top of her uh, actually, Blizzard. Malfurion goes really well. Malfurion also does really well, too. I think just because Stukov adds the extra little bit of slow, but they're actually going to go with the Anduin. Anduin! That's a first. And the Leoric. Oh, I am actually very, very curious to see... Are you typing these is... into your towers? No, I'm just thinking, like, is that a... Um... It's got to be a light bulb. Anduin, right? On the uh, May, I guess? Oh, yeah. No, I think or it's Sylvanas. definitely Light Bomb May. <laughs> like, Light Bomb on Leo, Light Bomb on May. Those are two people that can get in there. You want to have Light Bomb for interrupting the ETC anyways. Um, right now, they only have two real interrupts outside of Light Bomb. Oh, actually, right. I say real. May can only barely interrupt. We got Depression Valimar on Lucio. Yep, we got the Orphea, the Winterheart special. They are going to come at you hard and fast. I believe this could looks like very much like a running gun kind of type of comp, right? Yeah, they definitely want to they want to be over the map. They want to be interrupting with Lucio. They want to make sure they have vision of the other camps so that way they can have to hack it a dig. Um and we know Valimar is a pain in the butt with Lucio, so to interrupt some of the shrines. And more Tychus. There's been a lot of Tychus tonight. Yeah, Tychus is a fan favorite. And by fan, I mean team favorite. I'm just looking to see if we get any last second swaps. Okay. Looks like we are not. All right. We're going to go into game number two of this best of three. Oh, man. After seeing this draft snag, which one do you like better? So May is going to be, I think, pretty hard for them to kill. I don't know. There's ETC, Bullet, and Dahaka, but May has her trait. May, I think, is going to be very hard to kill. Um, Leo, I can see dying a lot. But it's Leo, so who cares? Trait. I value. think I like 4G Sports Draft more, um, just because I think it's more 
like you can see where you're going. You can see what they want to do with the ETC Dahaka and Orphea Ultimate, with only the saving grace being the Anduin um, Light Bomb and May Disruption. Right. Well, oh, and I'll... Savannah Silence. But that being said, um, okay, I found Thal. That being said, VGM Gaming showed great execution of their chains CCs yes. or in first game round one in game one and so I'm kind of curious to see how that will play out with Andu and I'm assuming light bomb but we will see all right going in we got VGM gaming on the blue side heavy on the Anduin TS cattle on the May Tiger JK on Tychus Maka on the Sylvanas and Vespertine on the Leoric and on the red team, 4G Sports trying to play to go into round number three. We got Winterheart on the Orphea, E. Kevin on that gray main, Valimar on the Lucio, Tenny on the ETC, and did I miss Ez on that Tahaka? Ooh. So, the thing is here, like with this game one, or with this uh, comp from each BGM, the combo, the CC combo is not as, like, I don't know, easy? Because May is kind of a weird CC, and, um, as opposed to game one, but as taking so much damage. So much damage. All right, we got quick rotate to clear out bot lane though from Winterheart. I'm looking at the level one talents. I don't see anything that's surprising so far that oh, did, we do we get the trade Orphea build again. It's not race car from Dahaka or the extra healing from Dahaka. Actually going for that spell armor spell damage for those other later game fights. Ooh, that is actually different then. So we're not going to see him double soaking as easily as the Leo. What do you mean that 0.5 means he gets a bit more soak? Uh, <laughs> minion's dead, right? Right? Yep, actually, is Cattle in trouble here? I mean, she does have a trait. Gets knocked yep. back by the ETC. Knocked back. Oh, man. Okay. But there's the pull, and that's why Anduin. I always feel like Anduin could be such a broken support because of that pull alone. Yep. It's just the rest of the kit. I mean, it's good, I mean, but he... it's not like, it's not like yeah. Anna or Deckard level right now. Right. He has the root, just like the Deckard has the root, but Deckard's root is an AoE. I mean, he has more targeted healing, so you can't miss them, So, which is better than some of the other supports, which all require a... a um... Yeah, the W heal, too, is actually pretty good, late game particularly, with the, if, if you're in a clumped team fight. Yeah. Alright, we got Speedy Gonzalez going on down there with the Lucio, though, and Kevin trying to get getting some good chunking off on the Maka. And uh, Greymane, like... So, like, one thing I learned this last season particularly, watching um, really good players on Greymain, is that Greymain can get, like, a, and I'm going to use a technical term here, a buttload of damage off really quickly with how they leap in and go into Worgen form. And it's, like, surprisingly yeah, I mean, how fast they can go. That's and usually, can, like, the biggest thing with a Greymain. Oh, yep. Winter's in oh, trouble here. Oh, Winter is not going to make it out of time. But like so, it's like it's like it's a stark difference in what you see in like I would say flat or even low diamond. When you get to like yeah. high diamond and then masters and above, the gray mains just know how to apply so much pressure to their targets. It's actually pretty insane, and you can see the value of that hero at that point, like the true true value. I think not just the. Camp He's actually take. going a little bit of a different build, doing the inner beast increases mana, so that way he doesn't run out of mana as much. Slightly different for than what we typically see. Uh, Winter actually taking not his normal Orphea build. No. That is usually always contested about what people like. Ooh, but big Ooh damage we got a big little kerfuffle going on in the bot lane, though, on this one objective point. And it looks like they turned around pretty well, though. VGM Gaming is getting Forge on the back run, a uh, back burn, and Tenny's going to go down that ETC. And there's going to be a delay on there by Winter, but I think he might die because of that. Yes. Yeah. And, and they're actually Kevin's losing pop as well. I mean, Vespertine is just harassing the crap out of as as up there as a as Ariel. <laughs> Ugh, it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised he didn't try to cap there. I mean, he knew that he was going to get interrupted, but like, might as well try anyways. Yeah, because um, he actually hasn't taken his own, so now he's given chances for Forge to <laughs> cap. Val's going to try which, to cap this one. Which I feel like he could have gotten all three of them actually. Right? Like, I'm actually confused a little bit by what they're doing. They're gonna get I mean, the I know, I right think they wanted to have some structure damage on bot. They figured bot lane's a little more important. But I, know, but I don't know. I feel like they probably actually could have gotten all three shots, which are, and I mean, in the grand scheme of things, is not as important as getting bot for it. 
no and i think that's what i think that's the point right like i think yeah bot lane is so important in this map that i think that they opted for that to get the towers down have an easier time to maybe secure that later on and take control of this match by just holding bot lane i actually do think yeah. that is more valuable than getting the three towers yeah that was actually something i didn't think about all the way the forcing the haka off which forced at least one other person from 4G Sports to go up top to try to cap, which means that now you have a 4v3 on bot lane to push into a fort. So it was actually very, very big brains. Yes, it was. All right, moving on here. We got some sappers trying to make their way in here. They're not going to make it. That's fine. I mean, like, I'm just trying to think of what to talk about right now because we got, you know, just the usual in-game in -game nothingness going on. Yeah. I will We're say so see far... Some dig. Yeah, I was very impressed with what VGM did at the bot lane. Like, they counter engaged what uh, Forge tried to do, and they basically what got like two, three kills out of that. And then they just like the Christmas of how they, oh, like, Tenny just got <laughs> killed in the back line. Sorry, by May with the Blizzard, and they're go they're fighting over his camp still. It is a one for one trade right now with Heavy on the going down on the Anduin. And May that is actually so hard to take a camp on. Yeah, it is. Who got the camp? Everyone's dying. Okay, it looks like... Oh, we got level 10s. Oh my god, is Wait, he no actually one... not able to get is in there? Stuck? Is he stuck? Is he stuck? That was actually What's going on? That was hilarious. The wall was hilarious. kept him away from May. Wow. Cattle is the god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And there is the... Wait. Wait. How did he just... That, that eats him out of Entomb? That Blizzard. shouldn't be Blizzard, correct. please. Blizzard, please. Is that really what happened? I'm going to wait for your stream to catch up to rewatch that. <laughs> Do not disappoint. Oh, wait. Orpheus Q yeets her out of Entomb? That's some BS. <laughs> All right. Well, objective one objective is going to go to... Forge Esports on that. They have. They're looking for a second one. They're gonna. Oh, I didn't see Vespertine on top with the drain. That was really good for the delay. Odin's gonna get mm -hmm. popped. We do have ultimates being picked. I'm showing them at the bottom, but we have a fight going on. I think they're gonna just let it go at this point. Forge. Yeah. Just once they popped Odin, I don't think there's any worth it for them to continue oh, fighting. Oh no! Nope. Wait, they they're looking at the pick. Leo. Vespertine goes down the Leo, and Ez gets locked down for a minute on the. Dahaka. I don't know, it's 4v5. Oh, are they going to get oh, the They're going to get Haka? a pick fast. Yep, they nice. got our kill. And now uh, they're going to secure that point. Okay, that being said, we have Wailing Arrow from Sylvanas in Tomb on from the Oric. Odin on the Tickus. Light Bomb, right? That's a Light Bomb. Yeah, from the Anduin. Nothing's happening out there. Uh, we have the Ice Wall, since that, that one's banned from May. Stage Dive. Winter. Wait, Winter. Winter doesn't make it. Now. Uh, I guess the Q does not Winter save all W. <laughs> uh, stage dive from the ETC. Let's break it down. Sound barrier from Lucio. Bullet from Grey Mundo. Crushing Jaws from the Orphea. And that's silence, right? Isolation from the Dahaka. Ooh. There's a whole lot to say. Yeets yeah, her through task walls, too. You can't cage Winter. All right. I was just, yeah, I'm just reading talents. Listen, I'm, I just do the basic bitch stuff. And you do all the actual heavy lifting. We actually we just got, got we, stage we dive this. from ETC. I literally read With that. With the like, hammer on. I know, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, but really? I mean, I guess there's grenade. There's a lot of interrupts for state for ETC, but still, the threat of mosh pit I still feel like is better than stage dive because they already have one global, and they're not going to have ETC off from the rest of the team. Um, and honestly, even forcing somebody to hold a basic ability. To, for your heroic, like that, it has a cooldown of 12 seconds. It's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like stage dive is almost really never valuable, unless you're like gonna swap them into the off lane. Uh, I'm just trying to think. They do have a good amount of interrupts though. For right, for um, Mosh. They do. I mean, I, BGM does have a lot of interrupts, but still, that threat. Like even the stunning somebody for two seconds because. Yeah, so suddenly somebody for two seconds because their cooldown might be coming back just very close. It's still good enough. Mm -hmm. All right, we do have a very close game go going on here. Thirteen is hit by Forge first, but VGM will be there very soon thereafter. We do have one objective.
tower at the bot right now. And I think they're just kind of looking, right? They're looking for an engage. I'm assuming forge, I mean. Oh, I yep. thought I was going to slide them, slide Maka. Yeah, I thought okay. I was going to look at that too. Maybe it was oh, ice something. wall. And that is one very trapped <laughs> ETC. But they counter engage with the crushing jaws to keep them off there. But Tenny's just going to, yeah, go down. And not able to do really any value with a stage dive or anything. Tychus goes down next though with the pressure from Greymane, Ki oh, not Kira, Ugh. Orphea, and Valimar on the Lucio. I mean, I don't know what to the say. CC is, the is CC is real. Enough. Like, yeah, they're so everybody's just staying just barely far enough away, and they're not able to actually lock down anybody. I know. Um, it's, like, it's like watching them. Like, it's like the greatest dance right now. They are. And they're having enough delay on the point where both people are going to be up in time. But this is there where you go. In. Stage dive value. There before the Tychus. Mm -hmm. And that means Heavy's going to go down on the Anduin. Heaven's really low on the Gray main. Does he not die? Oh my goodness. Like Leo goes down This fight instead. has lasted for like three minutes. I know, right? This is the longest fight. And Tenny looks like they're going to go down. Yep. From the Tychus. Oh my goodness. Is Kevin? Kevin? There he goes. Okay. But... We got a tongue on the Tigers on J Tiger JK. They go down. TS Cattle's gonna go down the May. Are they gonna chase? Are they gonna? I mean, Valmar, you know, wants it. You can yeah, tell. Yeah, he always wants it. Valmar He's give wants him the depression. it. Oh my goodness, they get it. So that eventually, was technically a five-team wipe. Technically, eventually, right? <laughs> it was <laughs> they eventually. Did every... They did eventually get one member or one person from the whole team. That took at some forever. point forever, but they did get it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> giving him a full level lead now with that. Yeah. Full level lead, eight shot count lead. Um, now they're gonna have control of the bot, cam uh, bot so, camps. They have dig available from Dahaka to invade onto the other camps. Mm -hmm. and, but I they're mean, not gonna have all their assassins yet. After game number one, VGM looked really crisp on everything, but Forge is looking really good on this game, and uh, I'm actually really excited to see if we can if they can. Make this a game, uh, go into game three, because that means we would cast a two, three game sets today, Snag, and our obviously voices will be dead tomorrow. Yeah, obviously the best <laughs> strings. I think all the other um, streams only did two O's. So. I mean, we know how to pick it, right? We know how to pick the good matchups. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Crushing Jaws with the great pull by Heavy to save Tiger. Uh, that was a great cleanse. Yeah. Level 16 Thank is now being picked up by both yep. teams. Oh, I had it up. This it back up. It's probably going to be another big team fight mm -hmm. that's going to last 18 years over uh, the single so, shrine. So before it happens, I will... Oh, actually, it's going to happen. I can't even say anything yet. Maze is in the back. I mean, that's... She's so broken, I feel like, with the kind of with the... Uh... She's so hard to kill. Yeah, she's so hard to kill. Light Bomb goes off. Doesn't really get anything, though. We have... Like, everything, they're trying to kill Leo in the back. And I just feel like no one's health bars are really going too terribly low until now. Vespertine on the Leo. Now looking he's, back at Tiger sucked, JK on the Kept him alive. Oh, Kevin get gets in the entomb, goes down. Tychus goes down. Tiger JK. Two. That's a one for one trade. Tenny on the Tychus though. Looks like they might be next. Because <laughs> Leo's also oh. just disrupting everybody's damage, reducing their damage yep. by fifty percent, which is making it even harder to kill somebody. The maze disrupting. They're trying to look for these single targets to finally get Anduin. And I mean, at that's, least now that, it's that kind is of support an on su support on support crime right there. And that looks like uh, Cattle's going to go down eventually on this May, I would imagine. Right? Are they? It's hard Maybe. to predict. No, I guess like, they're going to give it. I guess they're going to give yeah, it. Yeah, she's got so much self healing. They got the uh, objective though. Uh, that's another long team fight. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> The thing cool. is that so like so the difference between game one is that I feel like game one, the the stuns and the heroes that they picked were all very straightforward. It's like you got slide, you got knockback, and you got pull from Maya. Like those can all synergize with each other. And from both teams. You had Blaze and Stitches and I forget the other for Forge. But this game, everybody's kind of a lot more all over the place. Maya Ma May knocks back and creates zoning tools. You only have the lockdown of Leo with no other early follow up. Um, it's hard. Like both teams can't lock down anybody. Right. And it's just like makes these team fights take forever. And and I don't know what this. Oh, light bomb on the Valimar on the Lucio, and they go down. They couldn't 
skirt skirt their way out of that one. And then the question jaws is used again to try to zone from an engage on the Tendi who is stuck in the ice wall, but they will go down anyway from Tiger JK getting the last laugh. And they immediately pop Odin and they're gonna take this bottom fort. Yeah, that was a big turn of events for VGM, having control of that bot lane now with the shrines available. But uh, Ez is going to be able to trade out that top fort, so it is still going to be even on shots. Um, stage, if there's going to be enough delay, I think Lucio gets there in time to at least delay one side, but they'll be able to trade this out pretty evenly. Uh, stage ice is available if there is going to be a contention on Forge's Esports Bell Tower. So I think they just kind of trade this, let it be, yeah. and try to wait a for a, to res. a gentleman's agreement. Activation. Yeah. I mean, Ez is apparently not, not going to have the agreement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great intuition. Oh, wow, that was a great. I think he tried to use a skirt skirt, right? The, uh, yeah. The, the, what's it called? Tunneling claws? That might have been claws. Them up. Yeah, Winter's going to go down now. Stage dive, not in time to save him, but Valimar looking to try to get the Sylvanas kill, but they have to back out because they are low on the H H HPs. Good Break it down as you. Yeah, that was yeah. good. Wow, boops away. Valimar just saved two people with great sound, a great sound barrier and a great boop. Boop. So during that, VGM was able to get, I think, three shots from the sappers on the bot lane. So uh, a little bit more of a catch up there for the win. I mean, this is Tower of the Doom. It can be a game that goes down to one shot and then with a comeback. So mm. still anybody's game. But the real question is, can Forge control this bot lane and get it back? Yeah. Uh -oh. ETC. Oh, bye bye, Tenny. That was a great entomb. And the Sage was still down. That's the and benefit actually, of picking uh... your talents as soon as they come up. Because yeah, he actually sure. picked his talents before the rest of his team did. And maybe they're holding it based off of the 20s that Forge Esports takes. Which is, I'm sure, what they were doing. Um, but insta picking that Silence and Tomb, getting yep. the kill. I'm just looking through the talents. I mean, this still feels just like this feels like anybody's game. It does look like right now VGM has the momentum though, going into yes, the last. VGM definitely has the momentum. But the team fights have been so wishy-washy. I mean, honestly, Four G Sports has been winning the team fights eventually. With like they've been losing these little picks, but they've been winning the team fights. So mm -hmm. if they keep it up, I think they're they're definitely still in the game. There's still a hope for game three. You're saying? Yep. Ez getting a chunk down and another great entomb on the Lucio. He tries to skirt his way out the side, but that's too close to got in the rest of the team. And I feel Vespertine again, late game now, is just hard carrying for Silence and teams are pretty gaming. good. Yeah. Winter. Nope, not going to go down, but Tenny eating that nuke. Is that big red button? Did you take that? Yeah. Yes. The, you take it for the longer lasting Odin. And then... Um... Just because you're just in there for so long. The so there. this should secure them two more um, bell oh, yeah. towers for ten shots, which is now going to put them in the lead, sixteen to eleven. And then they have two, three sappers on their way. And they have three sappers on the way. Wow, this. I mean, VGM is looking really good right now, and they're looking to push their way to round number three of this first qualifier for the Storm Division. Yeah, I mean, Forge really needs to try to find a fight that's not in this bot lane, try to get in these open rooms. They have the Lucio, they don't want to be funneled into, even though this lane is pretty wide, but you don't really want to be funneled to allow a Leo, you know, give any type of Entomb target. So I think they kind of just want to maybe forego this. I mean, you can't really forego this. I feel like they can't fight this. Like, they're not going to get a pick on somebody because they're on the safe side. But stuff like yeah. that can happen. I know, right? Those ice walls have been so good. And a great sound bar to, bear to keep them alive. That light bomb prevents, and the pull again, prevents Tiger from dying on the Tychus. And now that's again a dead ETC. And Vespertine's in the death zone trying to get the kill on Valimar. Not able to get it. Oh, that's so low. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that. No, I think it wasn't. he, um, yeah, it's pretty close to being able to actually secure that kill. Because he's able to get out. Oh man, like the spooky ghost is so like so good when you're able to actually play it correctly. Some of us can't, but people that can, they're really good at that. I mean, ETC like in that fight, he after he did a slide to try to save or you know get past the um the ice wall from May, like he just 
didn't move after that. I think he got Silence and Tomb, then immediately followed by the May stun that ended as soon as the Entomb ended. Um, like he just, I don't think he was able to play the game. Oh man, and it looks like mid fort might go down. Yep, there it goes to the minions. As is gonna go down, I think this might be game. Yeah, it seems like they're kind of just making last ditch efforts. Yeah, but, they're just um, hard going in, hoping to get something happening, but. They're going to get the Sapper Camp. They're going to get the bottom objective. They have every fort but one. I'm pretty sure this is GG by VGM Gaming. and They're going to be moving yes. on. Right? right? Yeah, so I mean, it should be that you take the um, the tower and then you go up to boss. And that should be game. Right. right. Um, there'll be six shots. They walk those in. Actually, I think they do need to get one more Sapper in, actually, before they can do boss. They'll get all three, but... Yeah. Now they do boss. Yeah. Yeah, that's GG. <laughs> Real quick though, Nintori, so, I mean, thank you for the follow. All right. VGN, uh, I mean, like, it was getting, I like, think they were looking not, I'm sure they were probably looking worried at the very beginning. Like, their fights were definitely going in favor of Forge. They had the upkeep on the shots, but they just, they kind of had more of the pressure on that bot lane, which is the important lane. And then eventually their fights just, started going hard going their way with a couple mm -hmm. picks so that's gonna bring vgm gaming up to round three tomorrow looking yep. for that first qualifier spot yes indeedy ggs all around all right snag um so to end our our broadcast i don't know i mean i feel like we don't really do interviews until like the last the final round or whatever but yeah, uh, we didn't really do an interview on round one, so I yeah. don't think it's fair. But I would say congrats to both teams. They, I thought, I mean, it looked, I, I mean, VGM looked really good. So I kind of, um, I know I might be, might be biased, but I'm kind of looking to see if they will go on to win this first round qualifier going on. Mm -hmm. um, and moving on to the NGS Storm Division. Uh, real quick, uh, what do you think about this second match? So they looked at it for a while, Forge is in control, and then they and then VGM just kind of like turned on that that second gear and ran. Yeah, over. I mean, yeah, this second this game too. Um, I think Forge definitely had the momentum up until like right before level twenty, and then there's just like a couple picks that I think they, it just lost the momentum so hard that they couldn't gain it back, and um, VGM was just consistent. They're like, okay, we're we're getting these in tombs on just kill the tank, you know. Tanks can always just die really quickly if they can't use their abilities. Um, and so they were just, they were hounding them consistently and just did not give up. Yeah. So easily, again, Towers, definitely the biggest comeback map that there can be. They're down on shots. Doesn't really mean anything until you're down to your last shot. Um, and as that shows, I mean, they weren't really even down that much. They're only down two bell towers, but yeah. All you got to do is stick in there. All you got to do is stick in there. All right. Well, I'm going to have. We'll go back to our caster panel for a minute, but uh, that was going to conclude our broadcast. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, tomorrow, rounds three and four, I believe, are on Murda and Arrow's channels. Uh, then I think Murda has the finals for this first qualifier. I know we will be back for the second round qualifiers. We're signed up for that as well, and I think they're going to switch around who does what on those. Is it every week? I don't. I don't. I think it's every two weeks. I got to look at the calendar. Okay. Right but I know we yeah, signed I mean, up. there's still six more qualifiers or yeah. five more qualifiers right. after this one. So, so, I mean, all these games right now, I mean, they're just, they're practice. So, um, well, I mean, making it, it in the first one. I know, but I think if you make it, I don't think you can sign up for another one. Exactly. So it's just so maybe, like, maybe if you make it now, you're done. All you can do is scrim after that. Now these right. are just free scrims for another four right. weeks of, right. so, I mean, it's not like it's a bad thing. No, no, no. Um, and so we'll be back for a future uh, Storm Division qualifiers for sure thank you everyone for joining us uh we'll uh let's see i'd like to thank foul falindrith behind the scenes he was doing the obs work for the camera work during the match and it is fantastic as always plus also he made uh him and crow made the soothsayer which we've been using for the uh production value and so i hope everyone enjoyed that i know there's a way to donate to them if you like their um like what they did, I don't remember what the donation is because I'm a bad person, but I know if, if someone <laughs> wants to type it in chat, they're more than welcome to. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Snag, do you have any final thoughts before we uh, cut off for the evening? No, I mean, it'll be 
we'll be back here in whatever the time duration is next week or two weeks to get the next qualifier. Hopefully follow the same teams along. We'll get their stories and uh, be able right. to, to see how they do. So it'll and be maybe exciting. we'll get a, I know they're going to rotate who does day two. So maybe, well, maybe we'll get a day two. Once oh, well. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you everyone for joining us. Both, congrats to both teams. Uh, all three teams I thought played uh, fantastic today. So congrats to, uh, to them and good luck to every team trying to re-qualify for the rest of this and then for Storm Division in all. This has been Linehouse with Snega and Us here in the Mouse House. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful evening.